Um, testing. Testing. Uh, okay. Point the mic directly at me. Okay, might be a little too high. Hope that's good. Um, yeah, levels look good. Now we good. Hello, and welcome to the Black Ponder. I'm Neil Trotter, and this is my uh, live stream. <laughs> uh, yeah, welcome. I have no idea. One of these days I'm going to figure it out. Keep track of who's watching and what, but I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, if there's anybody watching and if you know, the audio is bad, just let me know. Um, hello, Stephen Lewis. Uh, looks good. Cool. Yeah, great. Okay, so, yeah, this is uh, Black Ponder. Um, you know, if you're watching for the first time, uh, we're a philosophy channel. We discuss philosophy, primarily philosophical texts, but sometimes, you know, we'll talk about philosophical concepts and ideas, and that's what we mostly do in the live stream. Uh, you know, I started doing live streams uh, a few months ago uh, because I'm trying to level myself up as a um, philosopher <laughs> maybe not so let's see like I call myself a philosophy enthusiast a philosophy hobbyist but I think it's time to level up and say like okay how about amateur philosopher <laughs> maybe I'll start trying to and so how do we do that we can't just talk at the screen we gotta like have a conversation uh, you know a dialogue because that's part of um, philosophy too Having, uh, you know, talking to people who may or may not agree with you or about, you know, critical discussion back and forth. And Stephen Lewis says, I've been a subscriber for years. That's cool. Well, glad you can make it to the live stream. Um, yeah, so today's topic is uh, scarcity is a myth. I think that's what I called it. Uh, the concept of scarce, you know, um, yeah, scarcity, like. You know, there's only so many resources to go around, right? We are, um, you know, we live in a world where there are limited resources and not, you know, we got to make sure we hoard what we can or like, um, you know, the world is actually losing resources right now and you know, that the idea, right? And, uh, oh no, we're going to like uh, drain the world of all resources and um, then we're, 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 gonna be screwed right let's maybe start thinking about colonizing other planets or you know developing uh, 
uh, you know, uh, start like making a, um, a society under the sea called Atlantis or something. <laughs> you know, th these type of ideas. And, uh, you know, I would argue like, um, no, we have enough resources. Um, it's more just, and we have the technology to reuse, reduce, and recycle. And, and all those things they used to say in the 1990s. But, you know, we just choose not to because we prioritize greed over, um, you know, humanity, right? And, uh, yeah, the issue is not so much lack of resources. The issue is just, like, resource management. But it's not even, like, resource management, right? It's really just, like, let's keep our greed in check, right? <laughs> right, that's what we're going to talk about today. Um... You know, and oh, I, I have oh, my phone is right here because I have my little bullet points. Do I have bullet points for this one? Because I have some things to say, but let me see if I, um, I'm skipping anything. <laughs> Scarcely is the social card. Okay, yeah, okay, that's it. Cool. Um, hello. Um, I can't read Arabic. I think that's Arabic. <laughs> but hey, how's it going? Okay, so I have a book here, and I've already made a video about this book. Oh, if I can pull it out, The Ecology of Freedom by uh, Murray uh, Bookchin. Uh, and I made a video about this already, but um, you know, the video, of course, like when I do um, videos on books, I'm, I rarely go over the whole um, uh, topic, right? Uh, the whole like all the, the the things that the book is about because you would have to have like videos that are like 10 20 hours long <laughs> some of these books I read uh, pro probably even longer in some instances so I just do you know focus on certain themes so I, you know there's a part two to this and I, um, one of the things I'm gonna talk about with with this book is um, and I, I just printed it because it's um, it's available on anarchistlibrary.org <laughs> so which is that's cool they got a lot of resources uh oh your name is uh jihad is that how you say it wow well, okay cool mm -hmm. uh yeah so they talk this book talks about scarcity right <laughs> and, uh, it, and we did talk about that in the video i made uh so yeah i think that would be a good um, you know, uh, was it supplement to our discussion? We can kind of read some quotes from the, this text and then we could talk about it. You know, it'll be fun. Uh, so, yeah. So, that's what we're going to do today. And also, you, you know, we, um, we're just hanging out. We're just chilling. This isn't like a lecture. So, you know, you could, we could go outside tangents and change topics of course i mean we're still going to circle it back to the original discussion but i'm not one of those people that trips about when like that's not on on topic so we're not going to talk about it i i don't usually do that um, so we could like go on tangents from time to time because we're just hanging out we're just talking so you know if you just want to bring something up it, it not, might not necessarily have to do what we're talking about um, but i can always circle it back later because again we're just we're just hanging out Yep, yeah, so, <laughs> um, it's interesting because, um, you know, there, <laughs> there's a, the whole argument of, or the idea like, oh, um, the, you know, the world is overpopulated. We have too many people, right? And, uh, you know, you, <laughs> you hear that often. And, and so, what, what's happening now, currently, is <laughs> people are starting to have less children, just generally. Uh, and you know the uh, like our our population is <laughs> is kind of falling. Although like we are, there's a lot of human beings on Earth, but it's it's come like many countries like China, for instance, or Japan, uh, their population is um, decreasing, um, and, and so it is here in the United States of America as well. People are getting older, and uh, they're having and they're deciding like. Yeah, I'm just not going to have kids. Or they're in this, you know, this situation where it's like, dude, I can't afford to have kids, right? I can't afford to support, like, a, uh, have a baby. And I mean, I mean, that's really where it comes down to. 
So people, and, and so you know, and then this is the whole thing about, um, you know, people are kind of escaping the whole gender role thing, where it's like women are deciding, like, I don't need to, um, you know, I, I, you know, delay my career aspirations to have kids, and I think that might be a little overblown in terms of the reasoning why people are not having kids. I mean, sure, I mean that's definitely part of it. But I think the primary reason why people are, in general, not having kids is is because um, they're just like I can't afford to have kids, right? Uh, or like I'm already in debt already, so like how the hell am I going to pay for a child, right? Um, but yeah, that definitely the whole like there's a little bit more uh, leeway in terms of like generals like in some countries nowadays. Um, so that's part of it, uh, and, and so you know, there's there's this concern about um, like, oh no, if nobody has any kids, right? The uh, humanity's gonna, uh, you know, uh, is gonna diminish, right? But then the counter argument, which a lot of Gen Zers, people my generation are like, well, you know, the world's overpopulated anyway, so this is actually a good thing, right? It's actually good is what you'll hear. It's like, well, it's good to like not have because you don't, you know, there's too many people on Earth anyway. Um, and I, I don't know. I think that's um, it's, it's just it's, I I just find that interesting that kind of like talk because I don't think it's like really relevant to anything <laughs> because uh, you know we we are so advanced as as our technology is so advanced now like we could support human human beings it's just like our technology is based off of um you know serving the interest of corporations and maximizing profit for them rather than actually um you know doing what's best for like human safety <laughs> and human prosperity and so you run into these issues of like well we don't have enough resources well we don't have enough resources because limiting resources is actually very highly profitable <laughs> right but uh we could definitely like support like all of human human beings and we could continue to support like the earth has enough resources to continually support an increasing population right uh so i don't know i think that's kind of a side <laughs> discussion uh or kind of almost not relevant to like the the idea of like well you know the whole scarcity of resource thing but here's a comment Nadia says, "Also, impending climate catastrophe. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's the thing. My friend group has been uh, discussing this a lot, not wanting to subject our children to the inevitable. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's gonna be pretty bad, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but you know, I would say like, you know, not to diminish like the climate. I mean, you know, climate change. I mean, we've." We're gonna deal with a lot of climate catastrophes in the future, you know, uh, because <laughs> you know cor our social economic system have uh, fucked us over, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean that's just gonna be the future, and it's sad. Uh, but so not to diminish that, uh, but you know, I guess all generations kind of had their crisis that they were dealing with, you know, like Generation X <laughs> with uh, Generation. Um, baby boomers they were all about like well what about nuclear you know because they were all worried about like nuclear fallout <laughs> and that that the new hot movie that's out today oppenheimer is about like the creation of the atom bomb which is like the you know the start of developing all these 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 massive wep these weapons of incredible mass destruction that inevitably you know so a, a huge concern like the generation before us was like I don't want to have children because they're gonna live in a, a you know a nuclear fallout right <laughs> you know and you could go on and on with like the latest like all I I think all generations have that apparent a post apocalyptic. <laughs> You know, you know, way before us, it was the plague. I remember I was reading um, the work, um, some works by Martin Luther, not Dr. Martin Luther King <laughs> Jr., but Martin Luther, the guy that started, you know, Protestantism. Um, and he lived like the, the year 1600s. He lived in that time. And I remember one of his writings, like his journal writings, he would say like, oh, you know, oh yeah, humanity, we're not going to live to see 
it's gonna be good 20 30 years humanity's all gonna be it's gonna be done done <laughs> even because in, the plagues were like so vicious much like today but uh, you know they they were dealing with all types of disease and they had like a lot of warfare issues too and a lot of social economic turmoil uh, so even back then they thought like yeah humanity's not gonna survive past this so it's it's always like there's always that apocalyptic scenario that's like prominent <laughs> for all generations are facing it but it's definitely true um yeah, climate, yeah, uh, that yeah, a lot of people are like are saying like, yeah, I don't want to like subject my children to that. Now, uh, I I know I, I remember listening to some people. They're like, well, you don't know. Like, you maybe you'll have a child, and maybe that child will, will be the one that will like, you know, usher in a new era of climate change. Um, uh, you know. They'll, they'll they'll be the one that changed the world kind of like <laughs> like a john connor from terminator 2 type, like a terminator like what like the special one who's gonna save us all like you, your child could be like that so to even think you know so they would argue it was interesting some people i knew were talking like this they were saying like well that's kind of that's kind of a selfish in a way because you don't know your child may be the one that saves the world and if you don't have children then how then you prevent it. It's just like I mean, it's so many directions you could take that. Is interesting, uh, but then you have like, uh, and then another thing I wanted to bring up was, you know, you got people like Elon Musk and rich people who are like saying like, yeah, the Earth is, it's fucked. So what we need to do is we need to go to other planets and start colonizing them. That's the future of humanity, right? And again, you know, in my opinion, that's very misguided. It is, you know, it's also very capitalist because, you know, it's ultimately you're just going to another planet. You're going to like drain it of all its resources again. And then you're going to go to another planet and then you're going to do it. <laughs> just going to constantly colonize planet. You know, I mean, that's the, the idea behind it. <laughs> right. Um, rather than like instead, Elon Musk could be like, oh, you know what? Instead of like spending like billions and billions of dollars off on like space tourism and like this idea that we need to why don't we just spend billions and billions of dollars creating like um you know energy <laughs> like um you know energy that doesn't that's not based off of fossil fuel or something which you know something he would some would argue like yeah that's what tesla is right <laughs> there's electric cars uh but you know tesla's all fucked up right i i i know people who worked for tesla right and um who are you know some people are, i know people <laughs> who file lawsuits against tesla because and, and you know the the safety um you know uh, conditions as a worker at tesla are, are abysmal well i've told firsthand from people that work for tesla and also um you know the the work itself is like um it's horrifying so you know you what you could do it, it's like you know the, the labor conditions are pretty shitty so <laughs> Uh, why don't you spend a lot of that money improving that, right? But you're not doing it. You do. uh, so, it, 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 and then so that's why it comes down to what I'm talking about. It's like we're spending money on the wrong things, and like we have the resources, we're just using them in a way that just maximizes like the generation of capital, or like a, you know. Um, feeds into the greed of like people who are already powerful rather than just uh, using our technology to like hey let's like make sure everybody is safe secure well fed <laughs> and um you know can succeed in life um, so i mean i guess that would be the prologue why don't i start reading some quotes from book chin that can help us guide this discussion further What page number is this? I don't know, but it's chapter three. See, I, I printed this. So it doesn't, the page numbers are all out of sync. So I don't know, but uh, it's chapter three. And listen to this. Listen to this. Look at the, uh, so chapter three is called The Emergence of Hierarchy. So Book Jin is like trying to describe, okay, this is how the concept of hierarchy came to be, right? You know, hierarchy meaning like power 
levels of power. <laughs> you know, like some people are, have, are more powerful than others. And like, how does that happen? Uh, he, 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 he says this. It has become rather fashionable to describe scarcity simply as a function of needs so that the fewer our needs and the smaller our toolkit, the more abundant and affluent nature becomes. In its divine simplicity, the contention removes the need to strike a balance between humanity's obvious potentialities for producing a rich literary tradition, science, a sense of place and a broad concept of shared humanity on the one side and on the other the limits that an oral tradition magic and nomadic way of life and a, a pair a paro, parochial <laughs> a parochial sense of folkdom parochial <laughs> that's a word i'll type it uh you know the root, the root of it is Pero, which is so pa patriarchal. Uh, so, you know, this is how you deal with word, like big words. I'll, I'll t let me type this for you because I don't want to leave people hanging. Um, there you go. A sense of folkdom based on kinship, uh, place, on these potentialities cool mm -hmm. and so i i don't i'm not i should i should look up the word huh in the dictionary but i'm guessing like it's not like patriarchal in the sense like um you know male um leader it's it's like more like parental i'm thinking it's like you know a sense of uh parentalism so it's like you know you know, uh, somebody who is older or like has more wisdom is like kind of helping you out, guiding you. So it, it's that kind of meaning to it. But actually, let me let's not let me look it up. But but that's a good way of learning the language is like looking at a word and uh, seeing if you can just figure it out by the root word. Let's see. Let's see what it is. Pharaoh Kiel. I hate when words, um, when the definition just uses the word to define it. Other or relating to parochial schools of the education, they like, dude, that's not helping. This is dictionary.com. <laughs> Parochial churches in Great Britain. Huh? Of a relating to financially supported by one of the more church parishes. Yeah, I, that's unfortunate. That that doesn't. That dictionary, dic, that dictionary definition doesn't help. Because it's talking about churches from Great Britain, but this is he's talking about, um, you know, uh, the human history before like Britain was an, an established <laughs> country nation. <laughs> so he's using it in a different way. Um, but yeah, I I, I I did want to share with you that process because I I do this all the time. I'm, I'm reading words that I don't know, and then I'm kind of like trying to figure them out, and that's kind of how you do it. You kind of have to like look at the root word and. Uh, the suffix and the predicate and try and see. So that's, I think, the vibe that I'm getting there. Uh, real time, real real time uh, reading right here. So where were we at here? Okay, so so to summarize that, that, that first um, uh, quote, so we're equating, um, you know, we're equating scarcity, like the opposite of scarcity is abundance or like affluent being affluent, being rich, you know, um, and we're not thinking about like, uh, you know, the arts and the, uh, you know, ch oral tradition, you know, magic and you know what he's, when he's saying like magic, he's saying like nomadic way of life. Um, he, he's talking about literary tradition. He's talking about like, you know, culture, you know, like, you know, when we're talking about scarcity, um, 
you know we're focusing on like needs we're not talking about like culture we're more talking about like abundance and affluence right so that's the gist of that quote so let me keep going here let me bring up my hello oh dave what's up <laughs> nice to see you and then kang person with the parochial mentality is narrow-minded or not open to new ideas okay cool thanks for the help and um unfortunately i keep mentioning this but i don't know why youtube upgraded and they got this these i these icons where i can let me i'll heart your see what i did there i pushed the heart did you see like some hearts come up oh no i don't know <laughs> i pushed this this button is a heart and some hearts just flew out of nowhere the problem is that button is blocking the chat so i can't read your, your <laughs> but i think i i think i got you just anyway actually by emphasizing material affluence per se in terms of needs and resources this functional approach to scarcity uh subtly uh subtly uh capitulates to the very economistic stance it is meant to correct it merely recreates from a hunter-gatherer point a viewpoint a calculus of resources and wants that are bourgeois of uh, viewpoint imparted to social theory during the last century okay so it's an emphasis on material affluence and it plays into like the economic uh, you know obs obsession with economics right And then, uh, is it me? What do you be? Kang Thumper says, is it me? What do you be? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Is it you? I don't know. Anyway, let's continue. Obviously, without a sufficiency in the means of life, life itself is impossible. And without a certain excess in these means, life is degraded to a cruel struggle for survival, irrespective of the levels of needs. Okay, so what he's saying, let's pause here. So obviously like you need uh, certain means. The heart icons, no, it's like, uh, it's just like this button that's just on the bottom of the screen and it just blocks like the first person that comments. I mean, the last person that comments, it just blocks. <laughs> it's a horrible upgrade. I protest, I, mean, I should like, uh, does YouTube have a feedback? But I'll look into that. Like, I don't like this new feature. So, yeah, he's, say, he's saying, like, okay, obviously you need basic needs. Like, food, water, shelter. Obviously. Like, so, uh, you know, when we talk about scarcity, it's like, okay, well, first of all, okay, I understand. You need basic needs. But leisure time under these conditions is not free time that fosters intellectual advances beyond the magical artistic and mytho poetic mm -hmm. right so now he's talking about leisure time um you know when, <laughs> when we talk about like okay i got some free time now what do we say when we say i have free time doesn't mean like i have time to pursue the arts or like you know play some music or like make myself better or are you just saying like yeah, I'm just, I just, I'm not working right now, <laughs> right? Because, um, you know, that's what our leisure time has become. I think maybe it shows hearts whenever someone likes. Ew. Yeah, yeah, it's a button. And yeah, so hey, we'll just keep rolling here. To a large extent, the time of a community on the edge of survival is suffering time. It is a time when hunger is the all-encompassing fear that persistently lives with the community. A time when the diminu you, you, diminution, <laughs> that, that's, that's what it says, uh, 
the diminution <laughs> of hunger is the community's constant preoccupation. Clearly, a balance must be struck between sufficiency of the means of life, a relative freedom of time to fulfill one's abilities on the most advanced levels of human achievement, and ultimately, a degree of self-consciousness, complementar complementarity, and reciprocity that can be called truly human in full recognition of humanity's potentialities. Right? And so, like, you know, the, the, the big word was suffering time. Um, to a large extent, the time of a community on the edge of survival is suffering time. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> so what he's saying is, look, like, community, we've, we, we're living in this world where we're constantly working, right, to survive. And, and so when we're not doing that, you know, we got to pay the bills. A lot of us have jobs we don't like. Um, or even if we kind of like our job, it becomes like we become so obsessed with like just paying the bills. It becomes like you, you start not liking the job that you have. It's kind of like I used to <laughs> a long time ago. I worked for a video game company, and but it was so <laughs> you know it was, it was funny because um, I you know I was um, you know that was my ultimate goal back in the day. Like I want to work for a video game. I studied computer science because I wanted to be working the game companies. And I'm like, yeah, I'm working in the game industry. But, you know, I worked for this company and it came to the point where it's like, I, I hate video games. <laughs> like, I was like, I'm video games are just not because the job was so grindy and it was so like structured off of like, we got to maximize profit. We got to make sure like we earn enough money. And it became like not about the art of making games or like the, the, um, the appreciation of like you know the graphics or the music or the game mechanics it was just like we just got to do this make this game so it sells enough uh you know to make our the shareholders of our company happy and it became like this grind to the point where like this is just not fun um and so that's what happens with when you live in a community where you're just constantly working and then so it becomes like suffering time right is what he's saying the suffering time so your normal your normal activities are like suffering time but then you have leisure time which is like a break from the suffering but it's like that's like the bare minimum you're you you have your leisure time you're like oh i'm glad i'm not working anymore but it's like you're so pooped and tired and diminished you can't even like oh let me pick up a book and like you know improve my my life or like you know or like you know appreciate some arts because you're just so drained working all right this is what he's talking about here and so we're gonna get to the scarcity part but let, let, i'm gonna keep reading some quotes uh let's see here oh let me yeah put this page back in the binder And rational choice presupposes not only a sufficiency in the means of life with minimal labor to acquire them, it presupposes above all a rational society. So freedom from scarcity or post-scarcity, post-scarcity, okay, well, that's, that's the key word, must be seen in this light if it is to have any liberatory meaning. The concept presupposes that individuals have the material possibility of choosing what they need. Not only a sufficiency of available goods from which to choose, but a trans transformation of work. Transformation of work. What I was, I was just talking about. Work should be fulfilling, not just this grind. Right? We got to like, it's all we got to get out of this, the scarcity. But I'll continue. Both qualitatively and quantitatively but none of these achievements is adequate to the idea of post scarcity if the individual does not have the autonomy moral insight and wisdom to choose rationally mm -hmm. so yeah freedom from scarcity so freedom from um working to uh get out of this whole idea of of 
lack of resources. Like I, I gotta work because you know I need to have a certain amount of resources because if I don't, like I, I gotta make sure I have a roof over my head. I gotta make sure I put food on the table and I gotta make sure I pay the water bill so I can uh, you know drink some water. Uh, but we gotta be free from that, right? We just gotta, uh, like, why are we working for that, for basic needs? Does this make sense? Uh, but let me, so I'll continue. To make need into necessity devoid of rational judgment? What is ultimately at stake for the individual who needs are rational is the achievement of an autonomous personality and selfhood. Okay, so this is what's important. Book Chen's point here. Um, so he he's making a difference between necessity, necessity and need, two different things. Currently, right now, we equate necessity necessity with need, right? So we're saying like, uh, well, food is a necessity. We need food, right? Roof over your head is a necessity. We need that. Uh, you know, water is a necessity, and, and so on and so forth. Like, the basic needs of survival. Right? And so, like, and Bookchin is saying, you got, we gotta get out of that. <laughs> we gotta get out. Like, these things should be just given. Like, we shouldn't have to work for food. Food should already be there. Right? Um, you know, we shouldn't have to work for water to pay a water field. Clean water should just be available. It's like oxygen. Right, like no, we don't we don't work for oxygen, right? Oxygen is just a given. Like, well, we gotta breathe, right? <laughs> right? So oxygen is just there, like and roof over your head, etc. So, uh, but uh, and so that's when he's talking about with rationality, right? Um, it's not rational, but like so, necessities should not be needs. Like, what does it? What do? What does a human being need? A human being needs rationality. And so, but Book Bookchin is saying like rationality is like learning about arts and like science, like, you know, actual science, not just like, you know, STEM science just so you can make like a pharmaceutical company like billions of dollars, right? <laughs> like not that science, right? You know, making, you know, pharmaceutical drugs to sell and, and such and such. No, like making drugs that will ultimately cure people not keep the cycle of like medical dependency and such and such you know like actual science like not just mathematics right but even like theoretical mathematics right where it's like we're developing new kinds of math we're not just crunching numbers to create um to uh manage like wall street and stocks and like you know creating like uh you know mathematics that can measure like risk evaluations for like you trading you know stock options you know you know like real mathematics like mathematics like let's understand the 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 realities of like nature you know the, using the language of mathematics you know that it, that's what we're talking about here so that's what a human being needs right and and, and so like book to say it is like um as human beings, we are, we're not, we're, be, we're, we're currently in a state of inhum, inhumanity, right? Because we're so just focused on survival. We're like animals in the Serengeti, right? Because we're just like, you know, basic animals, like trying to like survive instead of like being actual human beings, like pursuing things higher than just necessities, right? And then, uh, hello. King Thumper says, what does Bookchin say about, okay, hold on, I got to copy and paste, because this button is blocking, uh, but I'll, let me see what your comment says, okay, paste, unformatted text, what does Bookchin say about motivation, uh, well, <laughs> Uh, to just to skip over, sure, I'll tell you. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, and then I would encourage you to also, if you would like, check out my video that I did on this text because he talks about how um, uh, reality is like the book is called Ecology of Freedom. Uh, the, the freedom of e is 
yeah the ecology of freedom because he's saying like um reality is an ecology meaning like we're all interdependent with each other we're all interrelated we're all connected right and so like freedom has to do with how much connections you have with each other like the whole idea that we're independent and we succeed on our own merit like that's that doesn't actually is not a, even a thing right the reason why people succeed is because we are we succeed from other people's um you know contributions right so to be free uh you want to uh maximize the amount of uh interrelations you have so you want to enable as many people as possible right everybody needs to be enabled so that we can all feed off of each other and so that's motivating that's the motivation motivation is like you everybody has the ability to achieve uh their potential Right? because once they could achieve their potential then you could achieve your potential because reality is all interconnected and we you know we achieve our you know we achieve together through each other you know our, our achievements motivate each other that so that's what he would say about motivation right. okay so where was i here with these quotes um uh, Yes, okay, so uh, post-scarcity presupposes the former, right? Consumerism, the latter, right? So, yeah, post-scarcity presupposes um, necessities, right? A, a post-scarcity society, a society that just assumes like, well, obviously you're going to have a roof over your head. You're going to have food. Like, you don't have to work for that. That's just already there for you. Uh, you know, you, you have water, you have like uh, a safe space, like you can, you, you have an area where you're safe, like obviously you're going to receive love from, because you're being loving, I mean that's something you don't need to work for. And, and so like, that's a post-scarity society, but a consumerist society supposes the latter, meaning like, um, they suppose, uh, necessities of so, yeah they're, they're saying like you you need to uh focus on like necessity <laughs> that should be what you should be ups, uh, focused on like but that's like do we want to live in that that type of environment well let me keep going we currently are in that type of environment by the way if the object of capitalism or socialism is to increase needs the object of anarchism is to increase choice now so Bookchin is an anarchist, and so like if you want to know about anarchist philosophy, uh, Bookchin is a great person to um, uh, check out because yeah. So anarchism is like the the one of the focuses is the ability like to to um, to choose like you know um, whereas what is it capitalism or he's like even socialism right? They're focused on getting your needs met. Whereas, like, anarchism is this philosophy that, like, assumes, like, or, like, wants to push the idea, like, you should already have your needs met. Like, that should not be even a thing you're thinking about. Like, that should just already be, right? And so, like, once your needs are met, now we get to the important stuff. Like, the ability to choose. The freedom, right? Because that's what makes somebody a human being, right? Is their ability. You know, that that's the difference between... Uh, the, being humane and being inhumane <laughs> when you're inhumane you're denying somebody choice but when you're humane you're allowing somebody to choose right this is and that's really what comes down to like what does it mean to be a human being to have freedom right the ability to to freely choose you know your your terms of like how you want to live your life right uh however much uh, the However much the consumer is deluded into the belief that he or she is choosing freely, the consumer is uh, heteronomous. That's it. <laughs> heteronomous and under the sway of a contrived necessity. The free subject, by contrast, is autonomous and spontaneously fulfills his or her rationally conceived wants. Okay. 
uh, yeah, so the consumer thinks they're free. That's right. They're like, yeah, I, I, I get to choose, you know, instead of a, uh, you know, I, I want to choose the uh, Nintendo Switch instead of the PlayStation 5. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I want to choose the, um, the, you know, the, um, the, instead of choosing a, a Volkswagen, I'm going to choose a, a Lexus because these are my options, you know. And it's like, <laughs> or like, you know, you can go on and on and talk about like, hey, you know what? Instead of using my webcam, I'm going to choose to buy, like spend $800 on a Canon Rebel <laughs> and get like higher quality video. That's my choice, right? <laughs> but you're not really choosing anything, are you? Like, because you're not... Like, I can shoot this video on a webcam. Now, the quality's, like, it's grainy <laughs> and shit, but is that, like, really important? Some people will say, like, yeah, you know, it's important, it's aesthetically, but... I mean, is it... And, and am I actually making, like, a meaningful choice when I say, like, yeah, now I choose, like, higher quality content? <laughs> As if, like, the quality of your content has to do with the amount of pixels you're displaying on the screen. <laughs> like, like that that's what how we measure the quality of our content, right? <laughs> and like we think that's a choice that we're making. As opposed to saying like uh yeah, everybody just has the cameras that are the best. Right? Because that's not important, right? Of course, you're just going to have the best cameras. Like, why are we even thinking about, like, higher quality video? Like, that's irrelevant, right? You, you, everybody should just have access to the high quality video because that's not important. What's important is, like, the con, like, what you're saying, right? Or, like, the ideas you're expressing or, like, the, you know, the uh, art you're, you're uh, showing to the world like that's what's important and that that's the choice that's the meaningful choice right rather than like the consumerism right Uh, so what else we got here uh it says it is in the selection of needs as a function of the free and spontaneous development of the subject that needs become qualitative and rational cool so you know, basically saying like, yeah, it's the, um, the how how the human becomes a subject, how the human expresses their subjectivity, is w- how the rationality comes out, how how the human expresses their rationality and how they express their their qualities, right? <laughs> is is through that. Um, so it's about the subjectivity rather than the objectivity. If we continue with the whole, uh, uh, the video quality example, you know, I get better quality. <laughs> I'm just, it's funny because I'm just saying that because I notice like my webcam, is, <laughs> my webcam has such, uh, it's, it's fine, it's, it's fine, but it is like very grainy and stuff. So it's like, obviously I'm going to focus on that. <laughs> but you know so now you're just talking objectively how objectively is the the video quality based off of the amount of pixels you're displaying in the you know the frame rate and so in you know the iso like <laughs> how the the brightness is being determined and such these are all objective qualities but um uh freedom is like okay but like what is this person saying you know what ideas are they expressing? Like, how are they, uh, you know, uh, exp- <laughs> expressing themselves? You know, what makes them different from somebody, some other person on YouTube or something? Now we're getting to the subjectivity of the individual, right? And then, and by, based off of that, you can form a rationale. Like, oh, okay, so this person is, like, really into philosophy, and they're about ideas you know somebody else might be like oh they're like a makeup guru so they're about like looking good and you know somebody else is like you know a travel vlogger or something they're about like you know you start getting to the subjectivity and you're not so much focused on the objectivity of the the situation uh and that becomes like irrational like not irrational it becomes uh, uh, I, it, it's not correct to say like it becomes rational you develop there's a, a rationale that develops all right so let's keep it rolling here with some more uh quotes i have a few more uh, 
there it is. Uh, let's see here. Is that what I wanted to say? And then this is all one page. Okay, I can read that. Uh, let me see here. My good, cool. Let me pop this open. Okay. Uh, we gravely. Uh, so, what chapter is this? I don't even know. I'll give you some reference. <laughs> That's probably it. Yeah, this is chapter 10. The social matrix of technology. And we're still rolling on uh, this idea of scarcity. Uh, we gravely mistake capitalism's historically destructive role if we fail to see that it subverted a more fundamental dimension of the traditional social ensemble. The integrity of the human community. Right? So, you know, the biggest... The, you know the the biggest flaw of capitalism or the, the, the most harmful aspect of capitalism is that it destroys the integrity of human community All right and how so once the market relationship and its reduction of individual relationships to those of buyers and sellers replace the extended family the guild and its highly mutualistic network of con uh, consociation once home and the place of production became separate, even antagonistic arenas dividing agriculture against craft and craft against factory. Finally, once town and country were thrown into harsh oppositions to each other, then every organic and humanistic refuge from a highly mechanized and rationalized world became colonized by a monadic, impersonal, and alienated nexus of relationship community as such began to disappear so what is what is all this saying you know it's like saying like um your family is like you is a corporate you work for a company and that co company starts to take place of um family but it never really takes place of family that is like a delusion right <laughs> it's like yeah I, I work for this company and then you start to identify as a worker of this company now and it will be different if it was like if the company actually like treated you with love and kindness and compassion, but corporations, they're, they're you know the, the whole idea behind a corporation is to uh, maximize profit. So you know that's why they just lay people off left and right, and <laughs> you know you get like notices and you're, people are shocked. They're like, I worked, you know, fifteen years for this company. Like, why am I getting laid off or uh, you know or, or or whatever? Like, oh, I got like. I didn't get a raise or like my pay got cut. Like what's going on? I didn't get my, like, well, I, the reason why is because then a company is not a family, right? It's just like the point is to maximize profit. And so what, what's going on is people treat their workspaces in the system of capitalism as a family. But of course, like the company is not a family. And, and so the community is like, is not a thing anymore. But the problem is we think like our, 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 our conception of family is warped because we start associating associating our our identity our um, being with like our work right or in even further like our ability to produce capital for the companies that we work for and it's all the uh, we become less of a communal species and more just like this um, you know surplus value <laughs> right <laughs> But, uh, so, where did I lay you off here? Uh, capitalism invaded and undermined areas of social life that none of the great empires of the past could ever penetrate or even hope to absorb. Not only was the technical imagination savage, savagely dismembered, but also the human imagination. Right, so, you know, it's just like, um... You know what what is being said there like think of tesla for instance right tesla or just anything let, let, I'll, I'll give you two examples one tesla the idea is like dude we need to like stop driving cars that consume fossil fuel because the um the you know the climate change is like out of control so it's like okay we need to start driving electric guitar uh, electric uh electric cars 
right? That's Tesla's good for that, right? Problem is Tesla is uh you know is not obsessed with climate reduction, climate change as an issue. They're just Tesla is just like we're just a company that just want to maximize the profit, and we're just using electric car making as just that's what we're using to generate capital, right? Uh, so that's that's where human ingenuity and uh, human imagination are just dismembered because it's like wow we're not like it's good intentions but it's like we're just not uh, applying it in in creative ways we're just using it to maximize profit same thing with something like uh, Facebook <laughs> right that's another example the the whole utopian concept was like oh this is gonna be great you know people are gonna be connected. We're gonna build these social networks. People are gonna be like, uh, we're gonna be more socially connected with each other. You know, it's gonna be, we're gonna be more human because we're gonna relate. But what happened is like, you know, the Facebook is subject to like their customers are advertisers that just, <laughs> right? They they sell their data to advertisers, and so like the whole that whole like idea of, um, you know, human. Uh, being uh, humanity is becoming more social is like uh, subjugated <laughs> but by the more the higher goal which is like just maximizing profit or like uh, you know making our uh, the company appease its its customers which are advertisers <laughs> so that's what he's saying like uh, the capitalism like the, the, the you have these good ideas like yeah let's create electric vehicles great or like let's make the world more social great but it's dismembered by like the the ultimate aim of capitalism which is just to generate more capital <laughs> uh, i think i uh let's see okay oh no that's that's worse okay yeah had to turn a turn a knob there So where was I here? The cry imagination to power became a, a plea not only for the free play of fancy, but also for a rediscovery of the very power to fantasize. Right? Um, like the what I was working for about that video game company. Right? It wasn't like, oh, let's make some great video games. It's like, no, 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 dude. Just just make games that can sell. That's all we care about. It's like, oh, so my my power to fantasize is greatly handicapped because I have to make sure that this game sells. Because <laughs> right? if you're you make too many uh, off the wall ideas, you, that that's a risk, and we don't want to like that might not sell. That's what book two is talking about here. Whether its advocates recognized it or not, the urge to bring imagination to power implied a restoration of the power of imagination itself, and, and so like what Bookchin is saying as it relates to scarcity is like we need to have the room to imagine like that's part of being human right that's a part of being uh, uh, focusing on quality right and rationale is we gotta you know focus on imagination rather than uh, necessities right but I'll read you this quote here in addition to subverting the integrity of the human community, capitalism has tainted the classical notion of living well by fostering an irrational dread of material scarcity. Right? What does it mean to live well? Uh, well, I gotta buy a house, you know, or you know, I gotta like have kids. Not because I, you know, necessarily love kids, but I gotta make sure that when I grow old, that I have little little os uh, you know offspring to take care of me <laughs> you know you think like that or, uh, uh you know living well is to keep making sure the fridge is full you know got them that's how we live well where they're at <laughs> whereas living well really should be like am i uh reaching my full potential um am i like i have these talents uh, can I uh, utilize my talents in a creative, progressive, constructive way? <laughs> like, who am I really as a human being? What? Who am I? Let me explore this. Right. But we're too obsessed with uh, material scarcity to even go that route. By establishing quantitative criteria for the good life, it has dissolved the ethical implications of limit 
the ethical lacuna. Lacuna. That's what it says, but I don't know what that means. <laughs> Raises a specifically technical problematic of our time. In equating living well with living affluently. So, we... What does it mean to live well? To live affluent. You know, to have a, a big ass mansion and to have like, you know, six cars, <laughs> have a nice yacht, have a good timeshare. That's what living well is. Instead of like, you know, discovering who you really are as a person. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter if I got a yacht, right? Uh, and then, um, so capitalism has made it extremely difficult to de demonstrate that freedom is more closely identified with personal autonomy than with influence. Oh, than with affluence. Sorry, affluence, like being rich. <laughs> like freedom is more closely identified with personal autonomy than being influence. So uh, being able to, uh, you know, just being a free agent for yourself, being a complete subject, right? Uh, you know, that's way more important than uh, having material possessions. Because uh, that's re what really, like, personal autonomy is what makes you a human, you know, is how you actualize as a human being. Right? With empowerment over life, then with empowerment over things, with the emotional security that derives from a nourishing community life, than with a material security that derives from the myth of nature dominated by an all mastering technology right like instead of living in a police state where we think we are uh you know free but we're being surveyed all the time you know i, I walk outside this this cameras like every other block police cameras <laughs> and you know everybody's lots of people own guns and everybody's walking around all you know obsessed with safety uh, rather than being more community like oh i know that guy got my back you know my neighbor got my back so i don't have to worry about it nobody has we don't need cameras because we all got each other's back and then we can focus on the real thing rather than just being in this p state of policing each other right this is what book chin is he's, he's talking about here so then he says post scarcity does not mean mindless affluence right it doesn't mean like super rich <laughs> right like Kim Kardashian rich or something like that. Paris Hilton rich. No, that's not a flu. It's a, rather it means a sufficiency of technical development that leaves individuals free to select their needs autonomously and to obtain the means to satisfy them. Hello. That's what when we talk about like with climate change is like we have the technology to solve climate change, right? But our priorities are messed up. Like we're all obsessed with necessities rather than focusing on needs. Like, what does that mean? We're obsessed with being affluent rather than personal autonomy, right? Which is what's really important. Right? That's what it means, a post-scarcity type of world. Uh, and so, yeah, that's what I wanted to share with you today. Let me see, let me put this back. Okay. We did. We done reading. We done. If there's no other additional comments, I will conclude because we are kind of we're at that hour mark. Um, yeah. So the, you know, to conclude, there is there a such thing as do we have like limit? Are we like we only have so many resources, and then we're just after? Um, <laughs> but sure. I'm super relaxed. My shirt is like open. <laughs> uh, yeah, do we have uh, limited resources and when we use them all up, that's it, it's over? No, no. We have the technology that we can, uh, I mean, the earth is so plentiful. We just like misuse our resources because we're focusing on, uh, you know, greed or affluence and, um, you know, maximizing profit margins. Uh, rather than like personal autonomy and um, if we were like you know let's focus on personal autonomy let's focus on um, uh, choice <laughs> like free choice you know um, 
you know, let's per focus on, you know, the arts, like the real arts, not like, you know, arts just to sell stuff like, you know, NFTs or some shit like that, right? Like real, like art that actually like moves humanity forward, you know, <laughs> right? Because it, it allows you to like examine um, the world in different ways, <laughs> right? Uh, and sa examine yourself in different ways, uh, you know, that kind of art, you know, but we don't focus on that. And so... We run into these issues of like, wow, where's all the resources? Where's all the um, the uh, the stuff that we need to survive? It's right there, right? It's 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 here. You just yeah, it's the priorities in our mind have to shift. It's not the resources; they're there. It's the our priorities, right? Uh, so you know, we don't have to go to Mars and colonize it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, I I like. Um, you know, I'm I, I'm into astronomy, so it's good. It's always cool to see like what's going on on Mars and like the chemistry and all that. But you know, the whole like I'm I'm not really a fan of like we need to like send human beings to like different parts of the solar system and then they can live. Like, can we just deal with planet Earth first? Because we're like not even like <laughs> we don't even understand our own planet. We think we do, but we don't even understand our own planet. Let's get that straight first. Right, we got so much business to do over there and and it, we can do it we can do it we just got to prioritize our um, our uh, you know our focus so i don't i don't think i think scarcity is a myth <laughs> it doesn't exist okay well uh if there are no other uh, comments uh, or questions i would uh, like to thank you for tuning in I appreciate it. It was uh, fun reading, revisiting that work. And then there's also many other um, themes that are in the book, which I still haven't covered. I mean, it's a big ass book and it's got a lot of cool things, but it's it's a great book. I like it a lot. Yeah, if you, if you would like to check out my video where I talk about, um, where I focus heavily on the book, it, it, uh, the, the Ecology of Freedom by Murray uh, Bookchin, if you would like. But otherwise, yep. Yeah, thanks for watching. Um, uh, tune in uh, next week for some live stream. I also have just finished another book, which I will be making a video about. And uh, that'll be cool. So tune in probably sometime in the middle of this week. So check that out too. But until then, uh, this has been the Black Ponder. Uh, tune in next time for more Philosophical Thoughts.